Let me uh, go ahead and, and welcome everyone. I'm Dean Hebel, the Executive Director of Ten at the Top, and uh, very thrilled to, to have you with us uh, this afternoon. I guess it is technically afternoon now, so um, uh, feel free if you're eating your lunch. Uh, this is a Lunch and Learn virtual. Um, you know, I wish we could do it in person, but uh, with Lawrence's job uh, up there in D.C., I think that would have been quite a challenge, so this virtual platform is definitely a good one uh, for us. So um, uh, very quickly about my organization, uh, we are a nonprofit uh, uh, founded officially in uh, 2009. Uh, the uh, um, concept for Ten at the Top uh, started about four or five years before that, but we are a convener and a connector around issues that impact economic vitality and quality of life in the upstate region. We work with of nonprofits, with local governments, with businesses uh, around issues that cross city and county lines, things that we uh, can work collaboratively, uh, education, transportation, um, many other issues that uh, relate to the overall uh, community here in the upstate. So very thrilled again to have you uh, with us today. Um, and I am thrilled to partner uh, on this endeavor uh, with the Urban League of the Upstate. And with that, Sean, I'll turn it over to you to, to say a few words about the uh, Urban League. Well, thanks so much, Dean, and welcome, Mr. Jackson, to the Upstate of South Carolina, and we're so happy to have you today. The Urban League of the Upstate's mission is to advance equity by empowering Black and other underserved communities through advocacy, education, and economic stability. And the Urban League of the Upstate is just honored to be able to have this lunch and learn and to collaborate with 10 at the top and we're grateful for the opportunity. I know that all of our viewers are in for a treat today um, to hear from uh, Mr. Jackson and um, I don't want to prolong, I know well, we'll pick back up with you during the Q&A section. Um, so just thank you for joining us today. And if there's anything that the Urban League can do um, to help you or to help any of our young people navigate through um, high school, college, or career, uh, and um, to help first-time home buyers or even senior residential services, we're here to do just that. Thank you, Dean. Great. Thank you, Sean. And um, before... Um, Lawrence, before we turn it over to you, I am going to share my screen because I want to put up a, a photo here that I think um, puts uh, today in context a little bit. Um, can you all see, uh, Justine, do I have the right photo up? Okay, perfect. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I was uh, going to get um, a prescription at CVS and uh, there in the line, there was a, uh, you know, they have all the magazines and things. And there was a magazine that had, uh, that was about uh, Vice President Harris. And um, knowing that uh, we were going to have uh, Lawrence speak with us here in a, uh, soon after, I said, oh, maybe one of his photos are in there. And so um, I open it up and the first page, uh, pull out the table of contents, uh, there is not a photo uh, taken by Lawrence, but there is a photo that includes Lawrence in there. And you can see him um, there in the uh, in, in what would be for me the, the left hand corner, uh, taking a picture of Vice President Harris. And what in Lawrence, I, I, I would love your thoughts specifically on this, but it, it seems to me I could only imagine that there are probably 30 photographers on the other side, taking the photo similar to what you see uh, in that magazine, but you are there by yourself as, I guess, her official photographer. You get to maybe have a little bit more uh, roam there. So uh, yeah. I think it's just amazing the, um, you know, the fact that that you are uh, have such a wonderful position. Um, very quickly, Lawrence and I were both at James Madison University in the uh, late 1980s together. We, we were both on staff of the Breeze, the school newspaper, and we were talking about it for a minute right before this, that uh, 
it was really a professional uh, newspaper environment made up of students and uh, really a, a, a great experience for all of us and, and something we all have uh, used that experience uh, in our uh, professional lives. And many of the people who were on that staff have gone on to, to very successful careers in, in uh, journalism and in, in other areas. So that was a, a great experience. And that was uh, how I met Lawrence many years ago. And it was always uh, very, I was a sports reporter and Lawrence was uh, the editor for uh, co uh, photo editor. And I always uh, felt good when I saw Lawrence on the sidelines of whatever sporting event it was, because I knew we would get really good uh, photos. Um, and he took that uh, into a professional career that uh, I think Lawrence, I would I would expect has probably uh, gone even beyond your your wildest uh, dreams. So uh, with that, I'm gonna unshare my screen if I can figure out how to do that. Um, Oh, I wonder it's on a different place. Uh, okay, I am going to stop my share. And now, Lawrence, uh, I will turn it back over to you and let you share your screen again. And again, uh, as Sean did, would like to welcome you and uh, look forward to hearing a little bit about uh, your journey and your stories. Uh, well, thanks, Dean and uh, Sean. Um, you know, it's when Dean reached out to me for this, um, my first response was, I don't have time for this. And, and then I thought, well, all the things that I learned at the JMU and the Breeze and working with people like Dean, I was thinking, well, I've got to make time for this because this is important. And, uh, if my story is in any way helpful to someone else uh, coming up, then, um, then I should be doing this. And the picture of me squatting down, taking a picture of the vice president is my typical position for most days when I'm taking pictures. Um, so that, that was nice to see. Um, so, I, you know, I can, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself and then I'm going to uh, kind of talk about how I approach photography, and then I'm going to show pictures, pictures, and then uh, tell stories with some pictures, and then just kind of breeze through some, and then hopefully by the end um, there'll be some questions that people will have, and we can answer those questions. Sounds good. Yes. Okay. So, uh, like Dean said, I went to college at JMU, uh, but I I grew up in Richmond, Virginia. I have two brothers and a sister. Um, my parents divorced when I was 11 or 12. And my mom bought me my first camera when I was about 15 years old. And I never really thought about being a, a professional photographer. I, I think I went to college originally to be a, like a sportscaster or a newscaster uh, in the communications department but I quickly realized that I did not like being in front of the camera, only behind the camera. And I started working at the breeze, just kind of part-time. And then I had my first photojournalism course uh, taught by a guy named Tommy Thompson. And he opened my eyes to uh, photojournalism and the power of photography and storytelling. And I never, I never stopped since uh, that class. Um, after graduating college, I did a bunch of internships and then my last internship was at a newspaper in North, Norfolk, Virginia. And I worked there for about 10 years and then I transferred or I went to Boston to work for the Associated Press and lived there for about two years. And then I transferred from Boston to Washington, DC in 2002 and I started covering, uh, politics national politics, the White House, Capitol Hill, uh, sports teams, Wizards, you know, all that stuff. And then in 2008, uh, Senator Obama decided to 
run for president. And when he won, I, I, I had the, the gumption to, to try and be his, one of his photographers. So I applied and I didn't get the job. Uh, some guy named Pete Souza got the job. And maybe a couple months later, I think early January, he reached out to me and he asked if I was still interested in working for the White House. And I said, of course, basically. Um, so that's kind of my story, a uh, very quick condensed version of it. Um, so my, my approach to photography has, has always been very, it's been the same throughout uh, my career. And I think there are three things that I shoot for when I'm taking pictures. Uh, one is uh, your, your, if you can find the emotion of the story or the, the angle that, that kind of pulls your heartstrings or makes you laugh or, you know, that you get a reaction from, that means you are connecting with the viewer at a much deeper level. So emotion is, is the first thing I'm always shooting for. Uh, two is the, the information. You know, what's important to be told, what's important to be relayed uh, in a visual way. And if you can, and it, it could be as simple as just the president or vice president speaking at a podium, but uh, in context, it's at the podium for the G8 summit or the uh, healthcare act or something pretty historic or important. And then the last thing is if there's no emotion, if there's no information, and I'm trying to, to find something aesthetically pleasing for the eye to catch, to, to draw people in. So when you look at these images, uh, the next uh, 90 images or so, you know, one of those three things will be what you see, hopefully, or what comes across uh, those images. All right, that's my spiel, and let's start the slideshow. This was Vice President Biden at the time. And a lot of times I always like to turn the camera towards uh, the staff or, uh, you know, some part of the, the background of the process of protecting the president, serving the president, protecting the vice president. And, you know, you'll find a few pictures in, in this slideshow about that. Not a lot of people know there are actually two Air Force Ones. These two planes are exactly the same. Uh, and on, on trips that are overseas, uh, they take both of them um, for the trip. Uh, this is one of my favorite pictures because this was uh, during the Christmas holiday party season. And um, typically they have choirs, kids come in from around the country to sing at, the, at the, one of the holiday parties. And one of the treats is that they get to perform like for 90 seconds, a song for the president, first lady. And after this particular uh, choir from Detroit sang, the young man in glasses, he kind of serenaded the first lady. And then after he sang, the president came up to the kid and like, you're trying to make moves with my wife? And it was very funny, it was unexpected, and it's just uh, one of my favorite pictures. Uh, in terms of like history, historic pictures, this is um, Alan Gross, who was the uh, American contractor who'd been held captive in Cuba for five years. And uh, one morning we flew down to Cuba and a part of a, a three prisoner exchange uh, swap. And, um, you know, we picked him up and this is him pumping his, in, his hands, his fists in the air after the pilot had announced that we had uh, crossed Cuban airspace and we're in, we're in international airspace. And he was just kind of happy that, you know, he's not going back to Cuba.
uh, Sonny and Bo, and uh, Bo just recently uh, passed away about two weeks ago. This was a surprise birthday party for uh, the First Lady. And um, it was just, you know, it, it was at a restaurant in DC. She had no idea it was the friends had come in from out of town for her. And uh, it just, um, it was just one of the sweeter moments I'd seen uh, at that time of her like making a wish and blowing out the candles. <clears throat> and there's, uh, I came off the book uh, after my four years, eight years at the White House, and this is one of the pictures that's in the book. Uh, this is the president signing, I think he's signing the executive order, um, but he talked about getting a different angle on something, and this is, we did this at the new executive office building, and it was just, you know, I saw the chance to get up on a balcony and shoot down, and I was like, I'm going to take that chance. President the joint address to Congress. Uh, I can't remember what year this was. But this is obviously before the pandemic. Every seat is, is taken. Uh, another one of my favorite shots is uh, just a girl hugging the president. Um, in the Oval Office. It seems to me when you look at her, she's like, you know, she's patting him on the back and the neck saying, you know, thank you for all that you've done. And then I'll take over from here. First lady arriving at uh, JFK. Yeah, one of the things uh, that kind of was a perfect storm for the uh, president, uh, first lady, was social media. And, you know, in 2010, uh, Instagram started, and in 2009, Facebook had, I think, maybe 300 and so million users. Uh, you know, Flickr was around. And by the end of the eight years, you know, there was over a billion, like almost 2 billion Facebook users, you know, Instagram had seven or 800 million at the time. And the, the president, the first lady, they used every avenue possible to reach people. And in this picture, you have uh, Steph, Steph Curry and his wife, Aisha, doing a Vine video with the first lady to get a message out of, about eating rights and exercise or something like that. This is the Uniform Division uh, Security Secret Service uh, Guard just outside the Oval Office. This was the debate over healthcare in 2009. Uh, this is the president uh, with My Brother's Keeper. Um, it was in the beginning of the My Brother's Keeper uh, initiative. It's now turned into My Brother's Keeper Alliance since he's left office, but he brought in uh, young men of color and you know tried to show them alternatives to you know, the importance of staying in school. It, it, you know, for these young men to spend time with the president like this was a true, true treat and treasure. This is the 
president awarding the Medal of, Medal of Honor the East Germany White House. Uh, this is the president giving his speech um, on the 50th anniversary of the March on Selma. And if you have the, the chance to go back and look at that speech, and I recommend it because it was just one of his, uh, to me, one of the top five speeches that he gave as president. This is the uh, Marine One approach to uh, the White House. The president opening the door for guests to come into the Oval. Um, during the Easter egg roll, the president would uh, play tennis and shoot baskets and tell stories and not a lot of people realize that he's a really competitive person. It doesn't matter what he's doing, he becomes really, really competitive. So he was just surprised he made a shot or something in front of the tennis match. Walking across the Rose Garden. Now, if you have the chance to look up the White House press correspondence dinner, I think this is 2016 or not 2015. He did the skit with uh, Keegan Michael Key on uh, the Angry Luther Translator. It's hysterical, um, and I'll just leave it at that. So just just go watch it. Uh, this is the president. This this is a I wouldn't say it's a boring picture, but it's not a very exciting picture but the story behind the picture is what gives it its importance. Um, this was uh, the morning the president was about to catch the Marine One and fly down to Florida for the last space shuttle launch. But before he left, his uh, national security team, uh, Dennis McDonough, uh, Mike, see Tom Donlin, Tom Brennan, and oh my gosh, Daily, I can't remember his first name. Anyway, they were, before the president walked in, they were all kind of nervous and kind of just kind of jittery. And I didn't quite understand what was going on, but you know, the president walks in and they kind of form on him really quickly. And this picture that you see is the first picture that I take. And back then cameras made noises. And then after the first picture, my next picture, uh, John Brennan off to the right sees, sees that I'm in the room and he just kind of weighs me out of the room. So I leave and I don't think much of it. But this was on a Friday morning. But then that Sunday night, the president addressed the nation and saying that uh, SEAL Team 6 had captured and killed Osama bin Laden. And it's in this moment of this photo is when he gave the go ahead for the mission to take place. So uh, a couple of days later, the news outlets were doing a storyline or timeline of the president's movements that weekend. And this is one of the pictures that they used uh, to tell that story. First Lady. Uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, what's it like? What, what were they like? Um, and I always come to this picture and it's just a silly picture where, you know, the first lady was giving remarks about the secret service agent, uh, Mr. Tucker to the left and the president walked into the room without her knowledge. So he's behind her and as she's talking, he's making these faces like, mm -hmm, you know, and there are about, I'd say 30 people behind me and nobody gives it up that the president's in the room until she kind of realizes on her own. And, um, and then she 
gently smacks him on the face and everybody laughs, but I was really surprised that, you know, nobody gave up the fact that the president was behind the first lady making faces. President with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, president with uh, Kevin Durant. Uh, this was summer of uh, 16, I believe. And you know, as president of the United States, you can't step off campus, you can't go anywhere off the White House complex without 30 people being a part of that package movement. You got the press, you got the security, you got staff, staff. So a lot of times people came to him and would visit him throughout the day or through the week in his office for, you know, 15 minutes. And uh, he really appreciated that time to kind of get a break away from whatever he was dealing with. And then this day, it was uh, Kevin Durant, then of the Oklahoma City Thunder. And, um, and then I think in that fall, he started, he, he moved to Golden State. This is my first viral photo. Um, this was a departure photo with a Secret Service agent and his son who just, you know, if you're, you've been waiting in line and told to behave, you know, for an hour and a half, and then after the picture's taken, you just lose it. You know, the kid just, you know, all of the energy that he kept bound up inside of him was just out there. And the president saw what he was doing and he said, you know, let kids be kids. And, um, and this picture was posted on Flickr Within 24 hours, it had like a thousand or a million likes or shares or something like that. This is the president giving remarks at the uh, funeral service for Reverend Pinckney in South Carolina. And then that same day, we went back to the White House and they lit the White House up in the colors of uh, gay pride because the Supreme Court had announced uh, marriage equality. Step and press, step, step, staff and press boarding Air Force One. Marines at Camp Pendleton. Uh, president's changing ties during taping so he could keep a, I think there's taping a couple, couple of segments for future uh, play. First Lady giving remarks at the 2012 um, Democratic National Convention in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yoga in the East Room of the White House with the First Lady. State of the Union. Uh, this is the First Lady and Ellen doing a skit or visit to a local CBS in Bourbon, California. Again, if you've not seen this, go to YouTube. Uh, it's pretty funny. This was definitely in 2016. Ellen wanted to take her out into the real world and you know show her what things are like. Uh, 
this young kid asked if he could touch his hair, and he graciously said yes. Uh, the president was finishing up a round of golf, and this couple had gotten married, and they came out and said, hey, can we take our picture with you? And he said, sure. A selfie with the women's national soccer team. Golfing at Andrews. Uh, they were taping a uh, Christmas video, and you know, sometimes you get the giggles, you can't pronounce a word just right, and and the first lady was having a problem with, I can't remember the word, but she kept flubbing it. And pretty soon everybody in the room were, were in stitches. And um, you know, it's just one of those things, it cracks me up. Uh, what, what I love about this photo is, uh, if you look how the president's leaning into Meryl Streep, the actor, and she's kind of back on her heels and uh, because she walked into the room, she's a, this is a Kennedy Center Honors uh, night, and she was one of the awardees. But she walks into the room, and he says, Meryl Streep, I'm one of your biggest fans. And then he lists about 10 movies of hers that she starred in that he was a fan of. And he really just was so eager and so happy to see her that it, I, I think he put her off guard. And... Um, and I've never seen the president act like a fanboy for anybody really until this moment. And I thought, and the first lady is just laughing at it because she knows how much of a fan he is of hers. And uh, it was just really just one of the, the nicer moments uh, to capture. And this was uh, my last picture taken um, in the Obama administration. This is uh, January 17th. And he had just taken that group photo with the uh, GSA workers and he had shaken everybody's hand and then he kind of walked out of the room. And then a couple days later, uh, he left office. Um, but I mean, really, it's literally my last picture taken uh, in the Obama administration. So I've always kind of put this in the slideshow because again, it's not, it's not a beautiful image. It's not a, you know, but it, to me, it's a historical image because when I started uh, the White House eight, eight years prior to that, to this, uh, and all that I'd been through, so it was, it was a special moment. Uh, so after the White House, I came out with a book called Yes, We Did on my eight years in the White House. Um, it was a great way, kind of cathartic way of just kind of like processing, processing my eight years there. Um, and then, excuse me. In uh, August of last year, I got a call asking if I could be the photographer for the yet to be named uh, vice president, uh, Democratic vice presidential nominee for the uh, Biden campaign. And I was, you know, I wasn't working because of COVID and I just, um, and I, I just thought the chance and opportunities to covering the first female vice president nominee would be too great to pass up. So I said, yes. Um, so these are the pictures and I'll just kind of go through these. I think we have about, uh, if I can do this in about 15 minutes and then maybe keep it open for about 10 to 15 minutes of questions. And I had never met uh, Senator Harris, uh, Vice President Harris now, but before before this day on August 13th or 14th. So it, everything was new, uh, the staff that she had put together, you know, getting to know her, um, it was just, it was a crazy eight months. Oh, 
And one of the toughest parts about this job was the, the masks. You know, I talk about, you know, to, to get emotion to the emotion of the issue or the story, you know, you need the mask off so you can see the person's full face to kind of understand kind of what they're saying or kind of what they're doing. And uh, I guess it was last week or two weeks ago that the mask mandate has been lifted. And, and literally in the last you know week, the pictures that I've taken have gone up a level just because the masks are off. And I'm sure someone's going to ask me, you know, what is she like? And uh, my response uh, has been that she is uh, hardworking. She's tough but fair. She is genuine. She is uh, warm with people. Um, and she really, really works hard uh, because she knows that the world is watching her and uh, this is her holding her husband's hands during the 9-11 uh, ceremony. Uh, and she works really hard and she knows that the world is watching her uh, in so many ways that that it just drives her to, to do the best that she can. Uh, this was in, the, in California. There was a, uh, a wildfire last September. I think we went to 13 states and maybe 30 cities in, during the campaign. We went to states that typically, you know, that weren't in play for Democrats, like Texas, Arizona, um, North Carolina. This was the presidential debate, vice presidential debate in Salt Lake City, Utah. This was in Jacksonville. Florida, and um, it had been raining before the event. It stopped as she started talking, and then it downpoured the last two or three minutes as she was finishing up the event. Um, and this picture is just, uh, you know, it's just iconic. This is in Atlanta, the mural of John Lewis. These pictures are going to be out of order, so I apologize now, but uh, this was just uh, two weeks ago when uh, President Biden decided to address Congress. Uh, the first time that there are two women uh, behind him as a speaker and as vice president. 
you know, again, talking about that history. And this is her staff working outside of her, of her office in the West Wing. Walking from the Eisenhower Executive Office building. This is her squaring in on uh, Inauguration Day. This is the first full day in the White House. She's meeting with uh, just outside the Oval Office before a uh, presidential daily briefing. Her first world leader call with, I believe it was Canada, uh, first uh, vice or prime minister, Justin Trudeau. She swore in uh, transportation secretary, Pete Buttigieg. Standing on her toe mark at the Capitol. Senator Warnock in her, her office on Capitol Hill. South Carolina, Jim Clyburn. I think we're almost done. Walking out to the Rose Garden for a statement. Uh, Las Vegas at a food shelter. Uh, Connecticut for a child care center. First cabinet meeting in the East Room. One of the things she likes to do is celebrate staff as much as possible. And this was a uh, staff, staff for Simone Sanders who had just gotten engaged. And we were flying, I think, back from Chicago and uh, they brought out a cake for her and celebrated. Uh, this is her first flight, flight on Ring 2 from Andrews Air Force Base to her residence. And, the pilots took her, flew her over Howard University as a treat. So she got to look out the window and see kind of where she says where it all started. Her time at Howard. Uh, this is the, oh my gosh, um, I can't remember what world leader this was. We just had Korea last week. So it must be China. Oh, Japan. Is Japan. Okay, I think we have uh, just a couple more and then we'll go into questions. Yeah. This was the night before the inauguration uh, the reflecting pool. Uh, just staff outside the office. Oh, this is a photo shoot that hasn't run yet, but it'll be the cover of Ford, Forbes magazine. This was the moment that the American Rescue Plan had passed the House and um, the 
president and vice president were in the Roosevelt room with senior staff. And uh, the picture speaks for itself. You know, everybody was celebratory and the president gives the, the fist for victory. Okay, that is it. If anyone fell asleep, I apologize. No worries about that. Sean, do you want to? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, well, first of all, thanks, Dean. First of all, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Jackson, for. Oh. I think you lost him. Can, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, yep. got you back. Okay, great. I said thank you for sharing just the insight of the life of a president and a vice president. You mentioned three things in the beginning, the emotion, the information, and the aesthetics. Um, with diversity and inclusion being such a hot topic um, that people are focused on, and especially organizations like um, the Urban League and bringing equity, how do you feel that you, with, with your selection of photos and just selection of shots, um, bring that diversity to the forefront? Is that is that top of mind at all, or do you just take what you see? Um, and just, just how does diversity and inclusion or equity even play in your job? Well, I mean, I think uh, that's a great question. I think the, the bonus or the, um, the Obama administration and the Biden administration have both been about equity and inclusion. So you look at their staff, you look at their, their makeup, um, you look at their purpose. Um, they are all about bringing people of different, you know, faiths, religions, colors, backgrounds together. And I'm just lucky enough to, to document. Um, so there are a couple of pictures in this show that that I took specifically because, you know, outside of our office, the VP's office, there was all women, right? And I was like, oh, I, I should take a picture of that, you know? Uh, but the truth is, you know, that's, a, that's an average day picture because she has a staff that is not mostly uh, comprised of women, but, um, or not solely comprised of women, but mostly comprised of women. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm just taking pictures reflecting what's being what's being shown or what's being represented in the administration. It just so happens that these administrations have both been diverse. I think it's great. I mean, you know, you said one of your favorite photos was the holiday photo with the choir. Um, we, we saw a lot of children of color there. The birthday with um, First Lady uh, Michelle Obama the child hugging the president, my brother's keepers, the women's soccer team. Mm -hmm. um, and even the last picture that you took showed just such a diverse um, display of our country. So I thank you for that. And I appreciate um, you highlighting, highlighting that as well. Um, one last question from me before I turn it over to Dean to ask some of the questions from the chat. And that is access. You mentioned that you applied for um, this position or I did he freeze up again? I think he froze up again. Um, I think I can finish that uh, question um, for Sean. You know, you mentioned you had applied, and I think was that for the lead photographer yes. position? Yes, and so a position as a all right, Sean, you're back. You want to finish? Okay, great. Um, sorry about that. Sorry about the connection. But anyway, I was I, I was mentioning um, <laughs> with access. You you didn't get the job in the beginning. Um, they called you back. Um, so many so many people of color apply for things they don't get it. Can you just talk about your tenacity, or even just talk about having access um, to um, opportunities such as this and encouraging others um, when access doesn't seem to be um, readily available? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, for me, my situation was I had a job at the AP. I was fine. I was happy. But I saw this opportunity to go for something more, something different. 
and I applied for the job. And I did not get chosen for the chief photographer's position, but then the chief photographer reached out to me because my portfolio had been given to him as a possible hire. So I, you know, he reached out to me and I took it and I was very fortunate to, to have that opportunity to, to work during the Obama administration. Uh, you know, in terms of, you know, tenacity, uh, you know, I've come across so many people who, who, who've asked me like, you know, what's your secret? What's, how did you do it? And, and the short answer is, you know, everybody's path is going to be different. You know, no one's going to get to where, where they want to go the same way that I got there or the way that you got there or anybody else. But what's important is to, um, you know, to have your goals, to have your, your desires, whatever, you know, whatever you want to call them and to, to work towards them. And if you're not getting what you want out of this uh, endeavor, you know, reach out to people who can help you. Like I've, I've had several mentors over the years who, um, who just kind of kept me in check and kind of kept me on track whenever I've gone off or when I've been, whenever I felt like I couldn't do it or, you know, you know, it's just there are times when I felt like a failure and I, I didn't know what I was doing or, you know, just those low moments where I had mentors and friends and family who kind of picked me up and helped me get, uh, get over that self pity. Um, but really it's been, uh, you know, I mean, I really do consider myself lucky to be, the photographer in this White House and the previous White House. But, you know, luck is one thing, but to stay here and to be doing it um, consistently, that's hard work. And um, I think anyone who's willing to work hard and, and, and kind of get, kind of get over themselves, if you know what I mean, you know, that that focus and that determination. Um, and, and, and the other thing is you have to figure out, you know, what is success? You know, what, what do you consider a successful venture? What, do you, what are your parameters? What are your, your goals? Um, and mine have always been very simple and I've just, I've exceeded, you know, I just wanted a job that paid the bills and I could pay for my car. That's what I wanted when I graduated college and, uh, I've kept my low, my, my, um, I can't think of the word, but Expectation. thank you. Thank you. So, um, my advice to people who are young or just getting started or who even who are older, um, you know, find out the person who's doing what you, that you want to do, reach out to them, see if you can't get some type of, uh, mentor, mentee, uh, situation going. Um, and, you know, in terms of photography, it's about practice, you know, practice, practice, practice. I hope that answers some of your question. I know it's kind of a meandering, uh, thought there. So, um, Sean, I'll, I'll go ahead with a couple other questions if that's okay. Sounds yeah. great. All right. Um, so Lawrence, a few questions in the chat and, and a lot of thank yous and kudos, by the way. I mean, it was wonderful. And I think everybody appreciates the great storytelling and the work. Uh, one question is, of all the photographs you've taken, do you have one uh, that is your favorite? And if so, why? Um, there is not one photo that is my favorite because... Um, it's, it would be a disservice to every other image that I've taken to, to make out, single out just one photo. You know, um, the, the shot of the, the little girl hugging the president um, is one of my favorites uh, because it was, it was such a quick moment and it was kind of unexpected. And I really believe the pictures that, that surprised me the most are the ones that I appreciate the most. Being in this business, you kind of see where things are going and you get a feel for it and just kind of position yourself to get a good good shot. But then when something unexpected happens and you're, you're able to capture it, it um, it's the surprise 
and then the importance or the the iconicness or the the iconicness is the right word the um, the special specialness of the photo are what keeps me you know looking at it and going back to it. So that hug with that little girl has always been one of my favorites, but I can't just say it's my only favorite. Mm -hmm. It's like asking which child you like better. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, and, and you kind of touched on this earlier, but, you know, obviously the Obama administration being the first uh, um, African-American president and uh, Vice President Harris, the first uh, um, vice president who's a woman and of color, um, you know, puts the history levels of, of those administrations at, at a little bit different level, you know, you know, in your job, most of the time, I mean, it's really colorblind, and you know, um, you know, the, those elements aren't part of a day-to-day, -day, um, you know, work that you've done for thirty years. But obviously, in the these administrations, there is that kind of underpinning. You mentioned earlier about some of the photos being because that's just the way you know the makeup is, but. Um, you know, do you have, has there ever been a time where you've taken a specific photos or seen moments that you said, you know what, I need to take this because of the, the historic element as opposed to just the normal day-to-day uh, -day element? Well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, the first female vice president, everything she does is, is new. It's historic, so um, I mean, there's nothing that she's she's going to do the next four years that uh, won't be groundbreaking. You know, we're going to Guatemala in, in two weeks, and this will be the first time she she goes overseas or you know, international, and um, so. Yeah, I mean, with even with uh, President Obama, it was like, you know, I mean, after eight years, he'd done everything kind of eight times, you know, um, but still, he was the first. So uh, there have been images that have come up, and I recognize their importance uh, because of who they were or who they are. But, you know. Right. Yeah. Well, um, and... I wonder, do you, um, how does it work? Do you orchestrate some of the photos or are you just documenting what happens in front of you? Yeah, I, I the only time I, I direct people is for a group photo. Any other thing, I just, I stay out of it and just let, you know. And, and the great thing is President Obama and, and Vice President Harris are, they ignore me 95% of the time. I mean, when she speaks to me, uh, it's it's um, it's rare. Okay, she walks into the room. She says hello to everybody in the room except me because I'm just doing my job, and I just want to be a fly on the wall. So, I mean, really, 99% of the time she ignores me, which is for me, it's all I could ask for. Right. I was going to say it sounds like you were a fly on the wall, and and there you are. Yeah. Um, uh, a question uh another question that's a little bit different um you know from the urban league is about you know the focus on mental health mm -hmm. you know especially during covid and in these recent times how do you deal with uh do you have a support system for yourself and your team and how do you deal with some of the tough situations that you have to you know, that you see and are, are, are part of on a, on a regular basis? Uh, so uh, in the office, no, there's no uh, type of support system um, that I know of. I think there's, there was an email early on in the beginning of the administration uh, if people needed to talk to somebody. But for me personally, I've kept a journal uh, for the last... 30 plus years, and, and then I talked to my wife. And I have a, one of my brothers is a good friend of mine, so um, 
I share my anxieties or burdens with those two people. Um, but you're right, it's been a really, really tough year. And, um, and politics aside, um, you know, the previous president was the main cause of my, of my stress because I had two kids, uh, a girl and a boy, 16 and 15. And I was really worried about the world that, that they were growing up in. Um, and I felt powerless to, to, to do anything with a previous administration. Um, so if anyone is out there who's looking for um, counseling or some type of support, I, I do know that the White House has um, some network or organization for people to reach out to uh, through the HA, through the Health and Human Services um, uh, Department. So um, I hope that answers your question, but you know, it's not easy. And I mean, I don't think anyone, I think the First Lady was talking about how she was in a mild, First Lady Michelle, sorry, was how she was in a mild depression um, over the last 12 months as well. So I don't think anybody is unaffected by this. And if you, if you need help, right. definitely reach out. Absolutely. Uh, so a couple questions, uh, technical type questions. What is the editing process uh, like for your photos? Do you transmit them to the photo office as you take them? And who does the initial editing before they can be made public? Now, I just have to say, you know, the world has changed since we were in college when we had to go in the dark room and do yeah. all that. What What is your process with the digital photos? And you said, I thought it was interesting, you said a little while ago that that was when photos, uh, cameras made noise. So are you telling me they don't make noise now? They don't make noise now. They, uh, the mirrorless cameras are completely silent, which wow. in our line of business is, is exactly what you want. Um, so in terms of, of my process, a uh, couple of things. So say I take a day trip to Detroit with the vice president. So as we're going from stop to stop throughout the day, um, I can now take a picture of my camera. I can transmit it to my iPhone and then I can email that picture to anybody that I want. So as the day goes on, after each event, I'll send a couple of images to my cell phone and I'll email them to our digital content uh, person uh, for the vice president. And she will take a couple of images and put them online or put them on Facebook or Instagram. And, um, and then the social beast is fed, so, so to speak. And then at the end of the day, I will uh, caption and ingest all the images that I took for the day, give them a number, caption them, and then uh, when I get back to the office, I'll put them in the archive system. And, and then that, that's where they'll be until they're put into um, the presidential library. In, in terms of, you know, uh, editors, I do have some help in the office, someone to help me edit the, the amount of images that I'm going through. I'm shooting about seven, six or 7,000 images a week. So um, it's, it's becoming a bit much, but um, I'm, I'm going to get some help, full-time help pretty soon, but for now I'm getting help from my coworkers um, to help me get over that, that, that insurmountable amount of images. Wow. Um, another question about kind of your uh, photos. I know the person says, I noticed that you often have people in the foreground out of focus a little bit. Is that uh, to uh, intentionally put the focus on the background subject? Yeah, so that technique is called layering. So you have something in the foreground, you have something in the background or the center, and then you have something further uh, beyond that. And um, it's just a technique that photographers use to help draw attention to certain elements of the image. Great. Um, there are a couple questions, and uh, if you haven't already, Erica or Justine, if you'll put the link to um, uh, for people to purchase a copy of Lawrence's book. Lawrence, I put the place oh, wow. you had sent me last uh, 
uh, winter where um, in, I guess in DC, the, the bookstore, is oh, that? Right. One more page books, yeah. They, I, I, I'm pretty sure they still have some copies, but if not, they usually order some and I'll stop by and I'll sign them. Yeah, so he'll sign the books for you and, uh, and get it back. I got one for uh, Mayor Roberts uh, for, for Christmas, who I, I know he's on here. Um, so let's see, just a lot of thank yous, and I know we're close to time. Yeah, they did put that on there. Um, okay, uh, another technical question before we go. Uh, do you shoot it raw or JPEG? Raw. Raw. Well, actually, okay. I shoot both, but we, we store them in raw format for the archives. And what kind of camera do you have? Uh, the Sony A92. What, what so, would you recommend for a novice? Well, it depends on what the, the, the novice is doing so um, and what they can afford. Um, there's this great website called DP Review. That's davidpaulreview.com. And it, it reviews every camera that's made. And you type in what, what's your price point, what you want to shoot pictures of, take pictures of. It'll give you options to, to, to look at. Perfect. Um, and and the, another person asked, have you ever uh, concentrated on nature photo? Uh, in the beginning, when I was starting out in high school, um, I would do uh, kind of nature walks and, uh, and city walks, actually, just around town. Now, do you, do you miss doing sports photos? I do. Well, you know, it's funny. I, uh, my kids... My daughter played field hockey this past spring, and my son is still in the midst of a recreational soccer league. And I'll bring out my cameras and cover them, and that's my sports fix. There you go. They get the best. Their team gets the best sports photos in town. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Lawrence, this has been just really amazing, and thank you so much. The last thing, I, I because I, I think your story is just so so uh, amazing um, for for many reasons but uh, I guess the last question I want to ask about kind of kind of your your career uh, and you know Sean asked a little bit about you know or mentioned a little bit about your determination and things do you feel like you know for a, a young person especially a young person of color um, you know I mean you have reached the pinnacle working in two White Houses, what do you say to a, a young person who, uh, you know, maybe thinks that their dream is not obtainable for whatever barrier or, or reason? What would you say to them to, to aspire them to shoot for uh, the level that you've, you've gotten to? Uh, my, my question is always, why not you? I mean, really, why not you? And if you, it, and if, and I get it, you know, uh, it's tough when you don't see a lot of success around you and you don't have the support system um, that other people have. But at the end of the day, ask yourself, why not you? You know, no one, I had a, a friend's mom, uh, actually an old girlfriend's mom who said, nobody is better than you. She said, and she repeated, nobody's better than you. Nobody's better than you. And then she would say, and you're better than nobody, right? And what she's saying is, look, everybody, nobody's better than anybody. You know, if you want to go for something, go for it. And if you're not getting there, you know, ask for help, look for people, look for resources. Um, and, you know, I just just go for it because what do you have to lose? And and it does take then the hard work and determination. I mean, I remember, like, like I said, you know, we came up working our butts off in, in college and, and then from there. So, you know, you have to you have to give it the effort as well. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you can get an opportunity. I mean, people, someone will give you a chance, but if you don't perform, you don't, you know, if you don't execute, then that chance will be wasted. 
you know, they're going to move on to somebody else. So, um, yeah, hard work is, is the equation to success. Great. Well, Lawrence, thank you so much. We really appreciate you and, and your time. And um, um, I, I know for, for Sean and, and everyone as well, um, a last couple things to wrap up uh, in the chat, uh, both Ted at the top and the Urban Lake have a lot of events and things coming up, both virtual and in person. Uh, please check them out. We'll send a follow-up email to everyone uh, with uh, the link to this video, as well as to both of our websites. Um, Ted at the top, we're doing uh, a number of uh, uh, reconnect events and, and our cat chat every other Thursday. The Urban League has a June 19th um, or Juneteenth. Is that right? Juneteenth yes, event June, coming up. Juneteenth, yes. Juneteenth coming up uh, in the middle of June. So uh, we'll, uh, you can check out that information on their website as well. So, um, Sean, I'll let you close. And, and uh, again, Lawrence, thank you so much for your time and uh, for being with us today. It was, uh, it was an honor. I really do appreciate you giving me the opportunity. Thank you guys. Well, today has been a wonderful opportunity to not only spend time with Mr. Jackson, but to also view history that is history and also view the present history that we're walking through right now. So thanks to everyone for joining us. Again, Mr. Jackson, thank you, Dean. Thank you, 10 at the top. Thank you, Urban League. Everyone have a great day. Yes, thank you, thank you everyone. And Lawrence, stay on there for a second. I wanna ask you something else, but everyone, thank you so much. Hey, Lawrence. Yes, sir.